six o'clock. Call the meeting people, order. We got people online. Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. We do. We got, uh, Recording in progress. Okay. Now it's official. Yeah, you just want to see. I looked at it. It's right here. Sorry. Do you want me to read them off for you? Okay. Yeah. So we have Ali Judkins, Green Mountain Access, Chastity, Tim Moulton, Brent Sheets, and. Yeah, I keep forgetting the green mountain. Okay, everybody. Um, welcome. We should I'll I'll tell the rest of the board. Brent Sheets is um is uh, interested and in, we've had several very good interviews with him for as Ron's replacement. And uh, he's he is uh, um, he's, he, he's watching the meeting tonight. If we don't scare him to death, that would be a good sign. He is uh, flying up next Sunday, and he will be here next Monday and Tuesday. And so later, when when we go into executive, but figure out some time because Tuesday night is when we go up to North High Park. So we'll come out to North High Park with us. But sometimes figuring out what I was thinking, we might want to see if we could all get together for dinner Monday night or something. We'll figure out something to have a little time for everybody to talk with him, particularly with the board. We're going to ship him out with Mark on the road. And, and if we don't scare him to death, we'll be doing okay. <laughs> um, let me see you. So we got, we don't have Mark. So we do the Centerville, you want to do the Centerville Road and Brook Road project completion? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's about it. Really smooth driving too, isn't it? <clears throat> All right, I'll wait for Mark to get here. Um, how about the town assessor budget and reappraisal plan? Can I, can I just ask a quick question? Did that end up getting paved or no? I haven't driven over there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Centerville's paved. Yeah. It did. It is yeah. paved. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it has a nice little dip in it too. Yeah. Got a wicket. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's <laughs> special. I think I don't know. We may have paid extra to get a dip in the road. And then <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then you can you can do the uh you can do the brook road, which is um the contractor said he left it a little rough, and I told Ron that was putting it politely. That's it. We That's that. We got that fixed. Great. great. Okay. Oh man, it, it was okay. That was interesting. Um. So when Kim would be the town assessor. As far as that goes, I'm not sure of the progress on that. I last I heard for the reappraisal plan was 2027. I haven't done an update on that. And the town assessor budget was twenty seven thousand, which was motioned on at the last meeting. Yeah, no, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, Susan, yeah. I think there's a formal. I'll have to check on this from the uh, from PVR. The town committed to a reappraisal, which was step one. Right. Step two is submitting a reappraisal plan, which I think Justin, uh, maybe Terry, uh, myself, somebody has to work on, which is a which is a written plan that's due. Oh, I'm thinking February uh, to PVR. I think they gave you six months from the date that you committed to a reappraisal to submit a reappraisal plan. Right. So. I I think that means securing or pursuing a contract for reappraisal services. Whether whether or not that's actually signing a contract or something, you know, that level, I don't I don't know that yet. But I think Justin and I could figure that out. So 
um, just for the board's information in the next meeting or two, then uh, we may need to, to, to vote, basically have a vote of the board to submit that plan. Now, you could object to the plan and not submit the plan, which would put you in noncompliance. Um, but I'm not sure what the penalty is for that exactly. Well, isn't it also, I mean, the dates for getting assessors are years out, right? Well, well, no, I, I think what the plan says is that we have either done an RFP or have talked to enough people that we've reserved you know, some time, you know, I think it's a real plan. I think it's a real implementation plan, not a guess that it's 27. I think we actually have to do some work. So that's what I want to talk to Justin about. Make make sure that we're in compliance. So if the board wants to be in compliance with step two, that's, that's what I'm recommending that Justin, town administrator, bring back to you at a, at a meeting in the next one or two meetings. Ron, this is Kim. I have a quick question for you. So hypothetically, you guys go out looking for assessors and because so many towns across the state are in the same boat this year, um, what happens if you can't get anybody to commit to anything until hypothetically 2027 or 2028? And by the time that time frame gets here, um, maybe, you know, the sales studies and the market kind of settles a little bit and we're back within range. So then what happens? Do they revoke the requirement to reappraise? No, I, I think that if the COD will not adjust by itself, the CLA may, because that's based oh. on that, that's based on CL on you know sales. But the yeah. CO the COD is the one that gets out of whack and is out of whack now with Hyde Park. I think the the plan that I'm talking about is a commitment of the town to begin reappraisal within a time frame that they have a commitment from a contractor for. So we that's the work I'm talking about. Okay. Whether whether or not it's 26 or 27 is is just what it is. But I I I think the work part that I need to refresh with Justin is what is the minimum requirements for the plan. Yes, the plan can change for a lot of different reasons, but I think we have we're committed to submitting that response to PVR as a step two in this um, in the statutory process. During the January to May legislative session, there will also be more discussion about the state taking over reappraisal, and that is a whole different animal. And that yeah. that may, that may or may not happen before we can even complete a reappraisal. To to your point, if that you know, maybe it's two or two or three years away before we can get started. That might be enough time for the state to figure out how to how to take it over. And with that Thank being you. with that being yeah. said, um, the doing an RFP for the reappraisal. I've done one for St. George, so I can do one for Hyde Park and submit that as a draft and send that out to NEMS, Nimric, Tyler Technologies, and possibly another firm get um calls back from them and then submit that so now i know what we're talking about absolutely right okay yeah so i i and, and really the i think the board uh from prior discussions has been focused on the minimum statutory requirements because we don't have enough money for reappraisal number one so the longer out it is the better uh but number two the state is in a state of state of flux so you know the, and we'll know more by the end of may uh, if they even uh, move that forward. It, it seems like there's a statutory mandate now uh, from an act that was passed last session to for six year reappraisals on towns and have the state do it. But I, again, that's that was only a, um, uh, the implementation of that wasn't resolved. It was just the objective. Right, okay, but it sounds like we've got a, it sounds like we, ha like we have a plan to develop a plan. <laughs> yeah, we have we have to do what Justin said. I, I right. think it's part of that plan. That the timing of it, I also want to confirm, which I, I think is a February deadline, but I'll we'll get back to you. Gotcha. Okay. Um anything else, Kim? You want to add? You need to add? No, thank you. Okay. Great, thanks. 
Okay, still no mark. So how about the Hyde Park Down Fire Department? Oh, okay. <laughs> Introduce yourself. I know. Thanks for putting in our packet box. Last budget. <laughs> yeah, the next one. Oh. Thank you. Biggest increase in their water. Yep. <laughs> Basically, the budget's increased 10,500, but 7,000 of it's water bill. <clears throat> but basically, that's what it is a year. The $2,000 a month is what Jen told me. So, on that note. On that note, okay, yes. That's that's got gold in it. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, good water. And, and aim and on that they could drill a well. That's how I was estimate for 14,341.20. Is that where the pump dropped? That's just drilled. That's off. where that's 280 down. feet of drilling, six inch, 60 feet of 19 pound castings, drive shoe and sanitary well seal and state. Mobilization, muddy, total well estimate, 250 foot standard pump installation, five year warranty. How much? 14,341. 14, so you rounded up to 15. Yeah. Right. It always costs more. You'll have to have I, I did get another one from Packers, but they were 22,000. Even if you had, you might as well add 2,500 because you have to have a plumber inside to do any installation. Right. But, no, even if we, even yeah. if it was 25,000. Yeah, yeah. Just having figured what you know realistically we need to the only oh, the right. only issue you guys would have is when you wanted to fill your tanks. After they shut out, we got hydrogen outside if we need to. So how are we gonna work that water out for them to use so that they, for a fire? Do they just cut the domestic water off and keep them? I don't know how that would work. <laughs> Keep the hydrant because then it's concerned. Fire hydrant. This is because this has been an ongoing conversation, right? I mean, Susan, we we yeah. legality, we we're we're tracking this. Yeah. So so really if it's in the village, it's their water, their fire, right? If it's out in the town, we gotta take village water with the tanker. Because we've done that in the past several times. Right. Do you do you have is it, do you have a? You have, I think I have, have, on a different line than like our sink and our. It would be yes. You don't have you have a hydrant in, in your building inside the station. Yeah. So why can't we meter that? Because the hydrant mm -hmm. in the front of the station comes down behind my place down to the woods. So <laughs> but yeah, we got one inside the station. Right. But what if we if we if we did get rid of the domestic? What if we meter the water there is a meter on it. oh i thought they would have yeah, there's no meter that's just a base water right charge there's no meter they have no idea how much water we use oh they never did put that meter in we know we talked about it right i know they talked about it they talked about putting some sort of big so we, i mean we still have to pay for the service i don't know what do you because it's a hydrant we don't pay for all the fire hydrants no, I don't know how that works for But if that's the case, we'll just fill up outside with the hydrogen inside the firehouse. So yeah, but well, I just think that's the way. I think it should be looked into or I think that's, checked out. Uh, wait, it's just yeah. by right. so we don't have no well, surprise. And and um well and I, I think with the village now that they have their permanent replacement for the person who's taking care of those issues that we town needs to have a conversation with them because of course it's the library as well. Right. Right. You know, so they have they have the marble funds, right? You know, maybe well, they could just, subsidize some of these things. well, but then, then you know yeah. there, there's a year what, what is it what is that what does that do? But I I think um and the budget time is the right time and I think what we need to 
need to do is just have a chat with the village and say, listen, here's the here's the situation. And um, we appreciate the courthouse and the schools. You got the whole county paying for it. But the fire station. And oh, the library, and I mean, the courthouse and the schools use water. water. The fire station and the library, how much water do they use? Today? Well, yeah, yeah, right. There's <laughs> right. A, but again, and it's, this I mean, is really, I think, for... Without the hydrant, we don't use very much water. Yeah, for, for high park residents, it's how the, and of course, what the, the village argued is those bills are all paid by the county. And that was, that was their suit that, you know, that because the, because the courthouse and these pay so much in the village that that's why they should be paying that much money. And it's the county actually that is paying it in the benefit of having water. And as we know, there was a long drawn out lawsuit and they, came up with this is part of the resolution that was there. But I think in that resolution, there was obviously, well, I don't see that there was any consideration that these two entities um, are just being paid for by Hyde Park residents. And that's an undue burden on Hyde Park residents. Well, they're using the water. To pay <laughs> the, yeah. To, just speak uh, up. So so anyway, I think it's um. In is the, the library is the same number? Is the library is twenty two? So is that forty eight thousand dollars a year that we're paying for water in those two units? I don't. Do you happen to have the library's budget? I don't. I don't think it's as big as the fire, but it's it was another big increase. It was most of their increase this year was the water bill. Same thing, same situation. So um, <laughs> this will now get bumped further up the list to sit down and have a chat with them about it. Okay, let's uh. No, I mean, I think we need to get on it. I think we need to work on it. Keep working on it. Yeah. Yeah. Sooner than later. Well, before the budget gets set. So, when you so got a $117,000 budget, $24,000 in water. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. a lot. We're all going to come down and take showers at the fire station. Susan, <laughs> <laughs> can I give you a quick um, note? The yeah. V, yeah, VLCT uh, provided a update recently regarding ARPA funding. Uh, the federal government continues to ish, issue what they call interim rules. Interim rules control the use of ARPA money, right. including, including audit requirements and what we can use the money on. They just started to mess sort of with the dates um, and the dates that we had were obligations by December 2024 need to be made by the select board for the remaining 600,000 and all the money that was obligated needed to be spent by December 2026. The change which I just started reading about today is that the recommendation from VLCT is to obligate funding by the end of March, 2024. I haven't really figured out why they're saying this, except that small towns, which are most of the Vermont towns, except for two or three municipalities that are called Metro cities like Burlington are required to report annually by <laughs> April 1st on where their funding is. You know, what have you done with our money kind of question. So if you have projects, either current year projects, like this well discussion or other projects, you may, and I'll talk to Jen about this, accelerate your obligation schedule, which means that on our list of 25 or so projects, the board needs to sort of buckle in a little bit, mix mix up the budget FY25 discussion with ARPA and figure out how to get through this. One of the recommendations from VLCT is to transfer the ARPA reserve money, which is in a separate fund, directly into the town general fund, which means it will look like a, a, a revenue miscellaneous revenue transfer 
uh, that's available for any purpose in current year 24. What that does is it interacts with your fund balance policy. Your fund balance policy says, once you go over 20% of revenue, you have to either reduce taxes or identify projects for that money. So there's a two-step process that VLCT is highlighting. And I don't, I think their concern is that at some point Congress is going to meet and say and change those deadlines and take some money back. It's called take back. And we need to be we need to be concerned about that. That's all. Ron, can we buy, can we buy, as they keep moving, what we can do and not do? Can we buy equipment? You can buy equipment. You could use it for federal highway project matches. You can buy a well. You can do a lot of things that are within the normal governmental uses. You cannot pay down pension debt. You cannot pay off loans, those kind of things. But you can buy new things with cash, which is one of the things we're going to do with Mark's truck next year is pay cash for that to get rid of some of the 600 uh, we have another 15 or so projects that you might end up saying no to if you use all the money for a new truck, uh, but it's better than giving it back. Well, yeah. Well, and if, so, and, if, and if we do it again, we know we got we got a fire truck coming, we got a grader coming, we got a lot of big expenses coming, and if we use the money for that sort of thing, that helps everybody in town because it's taxes we don't have to raise to pay for it. Well, it could, it could help get us out of the risk of loan. Originally, the, the capital budget was set up to operate on cash uh, okay. due, to, due to accelerating capital costs and reduced trade in value. We're getting out of that pretty quickly. And if we can sort of do two things at one time, which is appropriate more capital reserve money and use ARPA to sort of bridge the gap, um, we might be able to get on track for the no loan uh, plan, the no, low, no right. loans plan, which is, I right. think some of the old select board members from 20 years ago had that plan. Yeah. Um, so it'd be good to get back on that. Yeah. yeah. It's a good spot to be to be able to do that cash flow. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um is this the next step with the fire department and well. We'll just they've they've got that information and we need to have a conversation with them about that, the rate and see if we can negotiate a reasonable rate. <clears throat> Do we have the need for a new fire truck coming up too? Oh, we're going on order. <laughs> uh, it's it's the <clears throat> we took a bond. the tanker net, which would be twenty five, probably It'd be twenty to two thousand five. So we're well, if you want twenty five years, you have twenty years. So. So okay. within the next not, not five, that far. Hey, that's, five or that's, six years. That's the tanker pumper. No, it's just a tanker. That's just a tanker. The other one's a tanker. That's the one we got on a grave. Okay. Mm. okay. So, so you're looking at like a 10.1% increase and 7% of that is water. Yeah, I think, yeah. Well, I'm just looking at this. This is weird. Your heating oil is... 4,500, we heat the building 24 <laughs> 7. You guys probably use two gallon, 2,000 gallons of water a year. Maybe. You know, maybe. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, we had to agree to truck maintenance, obviously, because price of trucks are expensive right. and maintenance right. is expensive. So let me, the, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> We're looking at at the um I'm looking at the medical physical so I'm figuring out what it's going to be that. Oh, oh wave your hands. <laughs> hey Ryan. Hey Ryan. Yeah. Can you text me a picture of that? Oh, Jesus. Sorry. Can you text me a picture of that budget? 
No, I'm going to do the Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're discovering since yesterday, AT&T service is... Uh, yeah. It's, it takes some the, though. The, the physical thing we've been talking about for way back when Eddie was here, and we still ain't figured it out. And Well, we did, the, and again, it started with 2000, and I did, because I thought that would be a benefit that we could offer. And uh, everybody... The fire department was and the members were not particularly receptive to it, so I don't see why we leave any money there. I know I figured it out. And that, yeah, and that, that. And that was your uh, yeah. right. Get that right. right. Yeah. No, Basically, I took that out and I put it down to the yeah to the water. equipment maintenance. Yeah, <laughs> equipment maintenance yeah. went up a thousand dollars, so I basically and then just swapped, around swapped around. it. Um, yeah, and the administration part is the. Firehouse software that we currently use now okay. is way outdated and old, and it, they don't have any support for it no more, yep. basically. Yep. So, yeah. so the new one is like $1,200 a year, I think. So yep. that, that, that was the why well, that went from 800 to 2500 because okay. computer software that you need. Yep. Um, but the rest of it is. Yep. Yeah. It's not. <sighs> We try to keep it within reason. Yeah, no, you guys, you guys. Um, but that, uh, uh, it's all in a very good place, the Aunt Dartmouth, so that is good. Chelsea, are you talking to us? <laughs> What's that? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's talking to herself again. <laughs> That's a bit of conversation. Okay. Um, so I guess the other thing that they'll have. Oh, are we done with the budget? Any yep. questions? Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Why is water so high? Oh, my gosh. We've been talking about it for, I mean, last week, it's been a long time, and we can never. There's more spot. I don't know. What do they do? Before a new person comes on. Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We can never figure out how to make somebody take the day off to go to the doctors. And uh, and with HIPAA, yep. they can't tell you anything anyway. So yeah, they can. But they can tell you good or form. good. Yeah. Do a form that's like yes, they passed. Yeah, or they right. Can take you take right on. So not really. They don't think much, but just no, just yeah. enough that they just can or right. Can do it. But they have yeah, to that's right. If something is there and they think that it might be dangerous, for them right? They'll say no. Then they'll just say it's dangerous. <laughs> Um, okay, so what's next? Oh, we did a few so this... bylaw changes, something. Oh. But, wow, okay. Which, okay. I guess you guys have one of those good. There's a couple of things with just to clean up things. Um, so vacancies, there was no really way of like if an officer retired or quit or moved to fill the vacancy. Okay. Have one. <laughs> <laughs> um so we just added that in there how to fill a vacancy. Yep. Um and I said in there to every meeting you had to talk about their election of officers, which is only month yearly. So we got rid of that. Um and they wanted to go with it. Right now we have three lieutenants. They wanted two captains and two lieutenants instead. No, no, they want it. I think the reason for the two captains they wanted to change because in order to run for assistant chief, you have to be captain for two or three years. Okay. So they thought okay. if they had two captains and they could have at least two people that could possibly okay. Yeah. Yep. Well, then equally, if some if one of them happens to leave, right. we wouldn't we wouldn't have anybody technically that could run. So no, it's basically yeah. <laughs> so this basically about. I think you got to. Yeah, I think that's right. I think you have to vote on. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. make the changes, but right. okay. No, no this looks great. Good little clean up of this stuff. All right. Okay. Um, 
Uh, probably let's hold them a little bit, well, just to be sure. That's it. That's it for the fire family. Yeah. So Mark's out working. Yeah. So there's only one thing he wanted to talk to you about. <laughs> okay. So towards the end of our sand hall, our screen died. Sand screen up in the pit. Yeah. But got a couple of things. I'm gonna find out there's a timing valve that runs the engine. Okay. Go down the crane shaft and the cam shaft. Timing valve broke. So when the timing valve breaks on those, inside the engine you got some valves and some pistons. They hit each other. Yeah. <laughs> everybody we've talked to says you're just better off to pull the motor out and one it. So we got a quote for a new engine for that is 12,310. But you get $1,500 back when you send the elbow in. In the court okay. let's play okay. the court. <clears throat> and then I think we had a guy look at him and he said he should be able to swap it out in a day. So, so that's that. <laughs> That's all, huh? <laughs> no wonder Mark. It took us a while to figure out what it was. And I'm like, well, we'll just change the timing now. I think last meeting, Mark's budget was getting short on the maintenance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we were excited about that. Right. <clears throat> okay. Um, so I guess um, you just said to bring that to him, tell him about it. So you can figure out. You're not going to worry about it this winter anyway. No, <clears throat> the engine is, he said it's going to take at least six weeks to get it. So I guess I thought was, it's not going to be any cheaper next summer. So to order an engine maybe or whatever, but we can wait till the summer and do it all. At least get the ball rolling discussion and finding out hard numbers and figuring out what we're going to do. Right. This is from right. Vermont, Vermont Engine Service. You have dealt with any of Yeah, I haven't. Well, probably my shop mechanic has, but I can ask two questions too. Okay. I don't, I'll, I'll I don't know about any other. I mean, anybody I talk to is going to call one engine. Yeah. I, I'll, I can call Mark and ask him like what the engines and what it is and ask a few of my mechanics. Okay. All right. That'd be great. <clears throat> yeah. Lisa says no rush. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, it's no fire yeah. truck yet. Take this with you. Make them all and everything. Okay. <laughs> It's, yeah, we thought we could just change the timing belt. Right, I mean, that one went better. And then there's a special socket you have to have, and we get to looking into it, and we call power screen, and they're like, "Yeah, that's the interference engine." So you probably did some internal damage. Right. Could you pull it out and have somebody rebuild it? Deeper, we don't really know until you tear apart. Really. <laughs> You know, I mean, you're not going to, they can't probably can't really give you an accurate cost until they get it, they all the power to what they need, which I guess is an option. But you know, I'm going to say that the guy in Southern Hampton does it too. He sent all the motors too. Okay, well, Matt, Matt, do a little homework. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, if you want, if you get other resources, yeah. whatever. I'll, I, yeah, I, I can at least ask. Like I said, we got, I mean, we do got some time to right. try to right. figure this out and what we want to do with it. And but it is what, 25 years old? Well, that's where I was going to go when we get talking about it. Because about the same time, we should buy the You, um, well, about the same time, about the pit. Thank you. Um, Morrisville's not going to use their snow so Let's, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Huh? Okay. Interesting. Okay. Hey, Susan. You're still on the highway budget. Well, well, <laughs> I'm not sure because we don't have Mark because he's out working. Well, I, I did talk to him today, so I can give you a couple um, okay. in, insights into the budget if you want to do that. Okay. 
So in your, in your packet, there was a highway budget draft. Uh, Mark and I talked about it today, showing a 3% increase, but that does not include uh, wage adjustments, which are going to be large because these are not including some of the more recent changes you've made, including some of the adjustments. <laughs> yeah, some of the special adjustments on the key points, if you will, paving at 245000 is a $30,000 increase. That's still well behind our 300000 goal, which we've had for five or six years, and we seem to not be able to get there. Um, again, every 40000 plus or minus is a penny on the tax rate. So when the select board says, you know, let's keep it to 3%, um, it gets challenging to fund some of these more flexible items. But really, the flexible items build up into huge expenses later. Uh, sort of like deferred maintenance. So when you cut paving from the three hundred thousand dollar goal, uh, we get project, we get roads that are like Centerville Road that are overdue, uh, Sterling View Road that's overdue, and we can't keep up with it. So that's one of the issues with paving. On the other issues, we've tried to manage the spikes in the budget because we have a few items that come all at once. And they're good for two years. So, for example, gravel crushing for the roads. We do that all at once. The contractor wants uh, wants over two, you know, ten thousand yards. Uh, we want to be able to get a best price per yard. So we end up crushing in the sense of dollars, forty two thousand dollars worth of material. And then we alternate that same amount in the alternate year with $42,000 of culverts for stockpiling. So that's how that works. It's on off, on off, because individually we, we don't get as good a price basically if we budget the same amount every year. This year in this budget, there's another alternate line item change, if you will, which is the line striping and the roadside brush cutting. So roadside brush cutting is usually a rental of a large, larger machine that can get out to the edge of right away. Line striping is a contracted task. Highway doesn't have the right equipment to do the double yellow. I, mean, I, I suppose they could do the double yellow, but it wouldn't be good, right, Ryan? <laughs> so unless, unless you have the right mechanical equipment or truck, it's, re it's really hard to get a straight line. So the idea was to, and Mark didn't know the final number on this, but line striping and roadside cutting right now would start to alternate with the 25 budget at $12,000. So one year there'd be no line striping, but we do 12,000 of roadside brush cutting, which means reaching out to the edge of the right of way. Uh, Mark was thinking maybe the better number is like 15,000. I said, I don't, I'm not going to pick the number. The concept is if the line striping unit won't come out for 6,000, but they'll come out for 12,000, then we wait on line striping to an every other year. And the same thing with the brush cutting. One year we'll do a whole bunch of work you know, reclaiming the right of way. And then we won't do anything the following year when the line striping is done. So though that's the only the only new change in in 25 is the line striping and the roadside cutting. A lot of the other lines are relatively flat. Uh, Mark wanted a little more money in fuels to try to catch up with cost of fuel. That was increased from eighty thousand to eighty five thousand. Um, the paving program is behind at two hundred forty five thousand, but. Again, that might be a decision you wait for into January. Well, when we... Steven, Ronnie, I don't know if he talked to you, but he did make some phone calls. And right now, in the average, if you could do a shim coat and then a two inch overlay, about $140,000 a mile. Yeah, so, so we're, you, we're not, you, yeah, so here, you can go around <laughs> in 10 years. No, there's no, there's no good news in paving. So when we get behind on it, highway has to budget and plan for culvert. Now. I mean, five years from now, there's going to be more. Right. 
Uh, right. And well, Ryan, you also have to do the culvert replacements, which is part of the plan. Right. And so that's another cost that you don't necessarily see, but it's part of the paving program. Right. But I, I'm going to say that's to, that's not if you're going to reclaim it or anything. That's just to yep. shim it and two inches, which <clears throat> I think you could do that a lot in the because we don't have the traffic, the truck traffic moving a lot. But, yeah, the other thing is that not all the roads are the same. So we can get away with 30 or 40 years on Roland's Road because, you know, who, you know, Fitch Road, you know, Fitch Hill Road is like, well, that's Roland's Road. So we can go 40 years probably there. <laughs> <laughs> on, on Center Road, you know, where they don't now, do it again, right off. <laughs> cost me too much money. <laughs> <laughs> I get on center road where Matt lives, we have to get on a 12 year cycle. So th that, that kind of plan really is not clear right now because we've always been behind been in the village. Then you guys start, but the trouble is <laughs> with what you said, Ryan, in a lot of these roads is you keep paving them. You keep paving them. And it keeps rising the road, rising the road. Oh, back. at some point. Yes. You, you can have the, the center bill in the same way. My mother's place used to be level with the rope when they put it in there. Yeah. <laughs> you drive down in the ten inch friggin' drop in that rope. You couldn't you couldn't pay that again unless you took and reclaimed that down three inches. You don't have the money to mill it or anything. You know what I mean? I mean it, yeah. it's hard because <clears throat> well, I'm gonna have to think about that because people are gonna be setting down into a pond. I mean, we're I'm trying to get all the time. Trying to get my mom used to level with the road now. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's true, but it's, you know, and water does run off the road, but um, you know, but folks don't want to see a giant increase in their property taxes either. So, you can, right, you so what are you gonna do? I mean, yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying that. A lot of people live on a blacktop. I mean, you don't live on a blacktop, but no, but I, I say it. I got plenty of friends that do, but it's you know. It's a never-ending, more serious problem all the time. That's why um, a lot of your towns are tearing up your blacktop, going back to dirt. They are. Well, then, I mean, look at the village. That's going to be have to pay right off, and you're going to be, I mean, you're going to have to mill all that because you can't add to that. Then you'd be able to sell your water. Yeah. Yeah. So that has to be six down. for you there, and now it's only four. <laughs> yeah, so you have to mill all that down. So that's doing the village is going to be more expensive. Of course, you got the catch basins, so you got all that handwork. So that's another thing. Well, that's just again, you know, doing the budget like this is just getting the land and land. It's, um, oh, <laughs> probably doing all this. I was just going to say, Ron, this is a good time to sort of get all this and then to take a serious look at what we can use the ARPA money for and not using it um, things that you know you get a one a one time it's lower if you will and then so it just it just catches us the year the next well, year. <laughs> yeah well my, part of my uh suggestions and and in Westford the exiting town planner did a really nice exit memo and I think if I do an exit memo, it will include solving the paving problem <laughs> for the next guy. Right. Because <laughs> it just seems like that is a perennial. You know, but when I got hired, that was, you know, 13 years ago, that was on the list of the select board. Solve the play, the paving problem. And I, I would never, I would bet it's will. probably on most towns <laughs> try and solve it. Right. You know, it's enough. Well, it's a huge impact on the budget. Yeah. Well, it's going to be good. We, we all have that bad of roads in this either. No. That's no, not, as no, a, as no, a, no. As a general. We're pretty fair. Yeah. The impact of this conversation for people that can't come closely is they're all reaching for the can jar. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Again, just sort of as, a, as an overview and figured out when we'll have to. We'll just see if we can come up with some. What? 
Aren't any simple answers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else? Somebody to spend all the money you can. <laughs> okay. Any more questions for Ryan? Yeah. Ron, anything extra we need where, to where, know? Where is the truck at? The one you ordered? On order still. Okay. okay. He's actually supposed to figure that out to me. The problem a couple weeks ago, if he, if he could give me a rough idea, we would have a chassis over here, we get to pay for it. Right. right. I think it's on no, I, yeah. I think the only, the direction I'm looking for from the select board is to work with and this is a little change in your plan a little bit. <clears throat> and I just sent you the link uh, for additional information on the VLCT recommendation for March 31st obligation. Okay. Is to work with Highway and Gen and ARPA money and come up with a obligation plan. Yep. That accelerates the sort of deferred December 24 plan that was in place for the last two years and see if we can come up with a plan that preserves the money so that we don't return it, number one, but also that accelerates your options to exhaust that money and exactly. get done and be done with it in quotes, which right. is what which is what VLCT is recommending to. At a certain point, you just end up with a whole bunch of projects that are worthy, but you can't really make up your mind and you need to spend the money and the board will need to make a, a decision. And that is the plan that I'm proposing comes back to the board in the next two or three meetings uh, ahead of March, but before the end of your budget so that you can use the ARPA money within the 25 budget. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Just and and well, and again, it's like having the conversation and looking at the fire department budget makes the need for a conversation with the village come into clear focus, and that we need to have something resolved by the time the budget is done. Yeah, I, I think having the time lane will focus your um, energy. Yeah. yeah. So and and again, saying well, here are all these wonderful projects that it would be nice to be able to help, but what's going to <clears throat> what's going to help? Town taxpayers the most making the use of that of that of that argument. <clears throat> okay, okay. Well, we've all had some more candy, so we feel better now. Better. Well, still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm definitely. Not. <laughs> but, uh, when, uh, Justin and I down here. Need, would you like a piece for the road right? Yeah, you know, you're good. You're good. Okay. Thank you, Ryan. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Hey guys, would you like to talk about the dog stuff? I was just going to say, Ali, why don't we talk about the dog stuff? That's perfect. So I got to pick up my kid from work for seven thirty. Okay. <laughs> so we got good news on the dog issue. Potentially excellent news on the dog issue. So why don't you why don't you jump right in there, Ali? Okay. So. Um, Originally, we had discussed and you guys had approved of buying a office trailer for the dogs, uh, which I have found uh, can be purchased if this is still the route you guys want to go. But I think I have a better solution. So I've been talking with uh, Betsy Cass up at the Lomo Kennels. Um, and as we all know, they have quite a large space and they have um, offered to come up with a plan with the town to lease part of their space. Um, it would be leased to just our town, the town of Hyde Park. Um, what we do after that for other towns is up to your guys' discretion. Um, there are some things that need to be gone over with Betsy specifically and Jason. Um, she sent me an email, which I tried sending it to uh, Susan, but you guys don't have any service, so that's not helpful. Um, so I don't know if you guys want me to ramble off this whole thing from her or if you want just the most important information. You tell me. 
think just you don't need to read that whole thing. We'll get a copy of it eventually. But I think as we talked this afternoon, just sort of give us the high points. Okay, so the high points would be um, the space needs to have heat, which it doesn't currently have because when it was in use by Jeff, it was part of their uh, summer wing. Um, so heat would need to be installed. Um, some small upgrades would need to be done as far as um, more insulation uh, to keep in the heat. Um, a animal grade air filtration system, um, <clears throat> which is a pretty good idea in itself. Um, and then it would be little things like uh, linking a water line through the end of one side of the room um, so you can have hose access. And then there would just need to be a sink and counter installed. There's already um, water access readily available. Um, and that's pretty much it besides an airtight lockable door because uh, one of the doors does need to be replaced. And then just some little stuff. Um, but those are those are pretty much the big things that would need to be done. So, uh, and see if I'm right, my understanding from this afternoon, and they're thinking they lease it to us, but we're responsible for the the upgrades in the in the facility. And then once we have the lease, it's all right with us to we could take dogs from other towns and charge them to pay for the lease. Yes. Would we have enough space for us and the town? Other towns? We would we would be leasing 13 uh kennels in that one wing, um, because there's no way to section off, you know, say we only needed six. There's no way for us to section off the other seven kennels for them to use for something else. So it's just one whole wing. Uh it's about approximately, do not quote me on the size. Uh, she she didn't put that in the email, but it's approximately, I want to say like 25 by 40. It's a pretty big space, um, but it's a, one of the smallest spaces they have available. What's your what's your estimate on the lease, Allie? Like, what do you what, what do you run, what are you guessing? Um, we didn't really talk too much about that. She was still uh, talking that over with Jason. Uh, but she kind of pinpointed in the like 14 to two range. They hadn't agreed on a number. Um, but like I said, that's all fluid at this moment because there's there's counter offers that can be made, you know, for work done, that kind of thing. How soon does this happen? Like as in do we would would we still have to do the temporary? winter plan okay so that's the best part um as long as there's something in place between the town and the kennels we can use that space as soon as needed um the only requirement is that it has to be heated with a space heater um until a permanent heating solution can be done uh which they have used that space uh they just used it over thanksgiving for a couple dogs that wouldn't fit into their other regular sized kennels. Um, and they heated it actively with a space heater. It kept it up to temp. They had no issues. Uh, so that, you know, that's a pretty good option. And uh, like I said, that would just have to be discussed with them and something put in writing before we could actively use it. Does that building have its own meter? Uh, yeah, so that building has its own meter, me and Betsy, talked about that a little bit she asked if if you know the town would install their own meter with a pole and i was like well realistically that's just more cost and not really worth it in the long run so we discussed you know just paying the difference in what their light bill is currently um until we figure out if that's going to work for us or should we install our own meter how many in the it's probably different seasonally. How many dogs a week, a month are we talking about? That we would put in there? That, that we'd have. 
Uh, so during spring to fall, uh, we would probably have on a on a estimate three a week, maybe. I know from just me starting in May, it was pretty active. Um, and I don't know how many Keith brought up there. Because we didn't, we you know, we kind of do work separately, but together, I guess right. you could say. So. Pretty active. I know area towns like Johnson, they are um, pretty active in the, the spring to fall range as well. Um, and just talking to Betsy, between all the towns that were using the kennels uh, before the closure, um, she said that Johnson and Hyde Park were the most active towns to use the kennels. So. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, Jim. It's, it's Kim Moulton. Hi. Um, so just because I don't understand how it would work. So hypothetically, you've got three or six or whatever number of dogs in the kennel. Mm -hmm. What's required? Or what's required for, um, like watching over the dogs is it somebody having to go up there multiple times a day does somebody have to be there like how does that work if there's lots of dogs there yep so that's part of the part of what's in this email i just touched on like the the most important points um which this is important i'm not saying it's not but um they would also you know like to discuss who would be responsible for the care of the animals whether it's one dog officer or a town employee doing all the animals or if each dog officer that has a dog in there, so say Hyde Park has a dog in there, Johnson has a dog, and uh, I don't know, Woolcut will say has a dog in there. Uh, would it be each ACO going in there and taking care of their own town's dog? Or um, would you like them to take on the responsibility of going in the wing and taking care of the dogs that are in there? Um, which that is a whole separate entity would have to be discussed too. Um, not sure how that would work, but she was saying because they would already be there if someone couldn't make it there or, you know, was late, they could kind of go in and chip in a little bit and help out. But then you got a whole separate thing for pay and things. And I don't, I don't even want to get into that right now. Cause that's not yeah. important to me. It's just the space. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thoughts? I'm scared of the cost a little bit. See the line. I, you know, Matt, I'm kind of a little bit scared of the cost myself, but in the thinking of the process and trying to find this building, like the temporary building, my thought was we're going to be essentially flushing money down the toilet for this building that who knows what condition it's going to be in when it's done you know like when we're done using it if it can be reused or sold off and then are we going to recoup what we put into it was my thought so I didn't I was kind of stalling a little bit because I really wanted a different option that was more permanent and wasn't going to cost the town a load of money and the taxpayers for a reasonable amount of money for a lease I don't see where we would be going wrong because we would be, you know, you could do it on a short term plan. You could say, hey, we're going to lease this building for three years and then we're, you know, the town is going to find a space to build our own building. That way we're investing in our own thing. But if, we're, if, if, if she's 14 to 2000 a month, we're looking at we're looking at a twenty five thousand dollar a year. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which we would we bring some back with charge in other towns. I was exactly. just going to say, right. And can't we, and we can up our fees. We can definitely up our fees. I, I touched mean, on that a little bit today. Yeah. Like Johnson is redoing their animal ordinances, which right. is something that we should also do because absolutely I mean, you've looked yeah. at it, but it matches ours to a T literally word for word. Um, but if we raise prices for uh, tickets, as soon as I can right. write tickets, um, <laughs> <laughs> then we'll recoup, you know, some costs from that. And that can go towards the price of the lease. It's 
a lot of things and factors that can help pay for the building, the cost of leasing that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we don't really have many options. I've presented you with two. You guys have approved one, which is great. It's just not a long term option. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's all. That's all going to be mm-hmm. a short term solution that we're probably not right. going to get back out of. Right. Well, right. I, I, I don't know. How about probably what we should should do is uh, here's it. Your your project, <laughs> Savannah is like. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I would love for you guys to set okay. up a time with Betsy to go check it out. Yeah. Um, talk with Betsy and Jason yourselves. Get a feel for the space, um, and then you know we can have another discussion about it. But I mean, snow's on the ground. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. And my gosh, we've been talking and talking and talking and talking about this. This is it an is opportunity to have a space for the winter. Yeah at least right so that we have something in place right i mean the only thing i don't really want to do even though it's not my decision i just don't want to put money and work into a space that we're only going to use for you know six months mm-hmm. it'd be nice if it was a longer thing until we came up with a you know actual permanent building maybe if that's the direction you guys want to go <laughs> Yeah, but who knows how long that'll be? Let's be real. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, so we're not going to have, that's going to be three years down the road. Exactly. That's why this I mean, is- come on, guys. You know, we're not going to make that decision and we're not going to find a place for it. And we're we, funding for it. We can't yeah. vote on anything in a year. So it'll be right. three to four years before we have that building. Right. And so that we- building cost is going to go up every year. So, so, so if we, um, I like say, so, so you're the you you want to go up see if, and if somebody else maybe Chastity wants to put set a time in the alley and go up and, and check it all out and then get an idea for it. I mean you know depending on the you know on the insulation and stuff that maybe that's done maybe we can get a group of people to you know go do it. I don't know how major a job is it which is what you need to do. You right. Have, again, you got mm-hmm. space eaters or talk with. Friends or boards or somebody that could go up and put in a propane heater. Again, what would be a good solution for the most cost-effective solution to do something that would get you through the cold weather? Sort of assuming that it will work, and that you're right that it'd be we'd be doing it for a couple of years anyway. Right, right. I mean, I will say I have checked in on another dog-friendly space um, that can potentially be another option. Um, but I, I will tell you up front that cost to lease that building is more than what this one is going to cost you. Um, so it's the, the current space that Ian Grant's using, um, on VFW drive. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as of January 15th, it's going to become available for lease. That indoor space consists of 3,452 square feet. Um, the fence is not included. That was purchased by Ian himself. Um, and right now, MSI is uh, planning to lease that space for $3,522 a month. And it's uh, not even currently part of the bylaws for zoning to be used as a dog space, apparently. As uh, Tina Emerson from MSI told me. So... Ian was permitted for his business 10 years ago, so he's still able to use it for that. And that $3,522 a month does not include heat and electricity. It only includes plowing. So just to give you an idea of how good of a price this is going to (laughs) be to use Betsy's building versus this one. There's two things. Um, One is zoning will any zoning be required for this i've seen some permits where people go from a cold space to a finished space etc and they get a permit and technically it's it's considered a finished space they just used it as a summer wing okay you want to check with steven on that i just as a recommendation for myself yep oh definitely check just to make sure because then that could also play into their assessment value, which could play into this. So. 
Cool picture. And have you talked with Dean Locke at all about this yet over in Johnson? Uh, very lightly talked to him about it. Uh, didn't really divulge too much information. Uh, but from just talking with him with what I did tell him, um, they obviously would be very interested in leasing space. Yeah. Yeah, I know he was looking into an office trailer for the town of Johnson. So <laughs> yeah, I know. I offered him the one I found. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. an option. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I think the next thing as soon as you guys can to check it out and figure out yes. what we can go into improvement. And the, we were we were going to use ARPA money to do the trailer and everything, so we can use ARPA money to you know to outfit this up and get it up to where it needs to be. Yeah. And it seems it seems like a pretty good solution to me, and and you're right. Once once we get it fit up, but then we've got to figure out. I mean, um, again, they're there, and 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 sitting down and talking with you. And I don't know if everybody got email, but Keith has um has resigned. So we got so we got Allie. Um, but but again, how we want to deal with taking care of the um. You know, somebody going up and taking care of the animals when they're there. And I think that might be part of negotiating the, you know, the with uh with with the folks that are there again because they're there. And all that does just for us is to is to add in the, you know, the cost of what when Johnson or anybody, any surrounding community needs some place to board their dogs, here's the cost of it. You know, we you take the dogs and here's what it costs and that covers part of the cost of the lease and 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 somebody taking care of them. We would be charging a small monthly fee to be able to put their dogs there. Yeah, and who knows? Yeah, be that. I, I will sort of have to start working out a bunch of details, but let's let's first you yeah. guys go up and give it a look okay. and get an idea and we'll we'll see. <laughs> I mean, it, it it sounds as though we we ought to be able to work out a good deal that works for everybody. We meet every week next month, so yeah, that's really <laughs> hard. Yeah, we can make a decision next week. Yeah, <laughs> Allie, I'll email it, you or get in contact with you. I would. I just want to read that email too. Just yeah, right, right. See what she says. Yeah. Right, we'll all read that and then you'll. Allie, you're you're going to you're gonna take care of the employment side of that, right? So it's not like. You would be our, you would be their point of contact for having dogs there, right? Uh, yeah, I would be the point of contact. Absolutely. As far as taking care of them, yeah. um, obviously, you know, I do live close enough <laughs> that I could do that. Uh, but if this is, if it's going to turn into a big, big job, then obviously I will discuss with you and the board. Uh, different payment arrangement, yeah. <laughs> which I wasn't going to discuss it with you tonight, but um, <clears throat> area towns also are doing something a little bit different than what we're doing, which I think if we're going to be all in this together, we should all kind of be on the same page. Um, but I'll present that to you guys at a different time. Okay. This Just is more important. Budget. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Give me a bigger budget. <laughs> okay, super. Thank you. Thanks for everything, all the work you're putting into this. I know it's yeah, fun. no problem. I'll uh, I'll get in touch with Betsy on a good time and let you guys know when she's available. And I will try to email Justin the email she sent me, so maybe you, he can send it to all of you right there since okay. I have service. <laughs> Thank you. We'll have service when we get home. Perfect. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. We have Jennifer online. Well, just let you know. Okay. Um, kind of jumping all over the place here, aren't we? The uh, as you'll see, the emergency management officials. Dawn is um, is resigning. Um, 
as you can see, that uh, Brad has, has uh, submitted a letter that would be interested in doing it. Ron, have we seen? And I don't. It's not there. Oh, what is it? Maybe it's not even all these piles of paper. Yeah, it was a. Yeah, it's 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 I think what happened was that Brad had new interest in resuming some emergency response services to the town. He heard, uh, or I don't know how he hears, but um, Don Archbold had sent me an email saying, hey, I'm getting really jammed at work. I need to step aside from EMC, which is emergency management coordinator but I'll stay on until you find somebody else. So it was like the same, it had to be within 24 hours of each other. I didn't even know that they were talking to each other, but the timing was a little strange. So he is willing to step up in some role uh, for the town. And and it was, I don't know how long ago it was, a year ago, maybe two years ago now, where Brad was taking on 18 different town positions at once. Yeah. And, and the board said, can you chill out a little bit? How about focus on a couple? And he did He did that, actually. Uh, Roland took over the emergency management director position. Don came on as emergency management coordinator. Uh, now, Brad has time. I don't exactly know what he's doing. He's doing still doing the, uh, you know, the NEM stuff and Fast Squad, I believe. I, I haven't seen a timesheet from him for a while on Fast. The option for the board is to uh, let him come back in uh, ahead of the January advertisement. So every January, the board advertises for volunteers. It's a townwide kind of plea to the community to say, hey, here, here's all our positions, either the positions that open up every year because they're one-year appointments, or there's vacancies, or there's terms ending, like on the planning commission. Uh, we could wait for that advertisement to go out in January. Or since Brad has expressed interest and Don has expressed disinterest, uh, to make that change now ahead of that plea. So that's your that's your choice. I mean, I emergency management in general is really on top of everybody's mind when power goes out for an extended period of time. And then it kind of goes into the back of everybody's mind. Uh, the role of the EMD and the EMC is to keep it in front of everybody's mind. So Dawn was doing pretty good at that. I mean, she was trying to keep up with the state notices and whatnot, uh, but she can't do that anymore. So Brad said he would certainly jump in and help out. And that would relieve Dawn of her, um, you know, commitment, but it, but it's something that she's asked for. Hi. I think Brad would be good at it. Yeah, yeah, I think he'd be good. You know, dropped off a lot of hats. Yeah. We need a motion time? Yeah, why don't we go ahead and appoint him, take advantage of somebody willing to do something. Yeah, the, appoint the appointment could be through, you know, April or it could be, you know, from April to April 25. I think those are your two choices. I mean, it's close enough to when you would be making appointments, but yeah, uh, April twenty-five. Okay, so I want to make a motion. Yep, I'll make it. Yeah, we got this down, so Pat, we got we just make a motion. I'll, 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 I'll make the motion to <laughs> that right. Brad Carrier will be the emergency management coordinator. As Don Archbold is resigning. Second. Okay. Because we have to carry it. We don't know what he's writing up, but we're saying for 
He understands my mind. I can just say, yeah. Yeah. I'll just wait for a second. And then you got a second for rolling. Okay. Okay. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. We'll let you see Jess's wave. She makes her make the little space go up and down or something. Well, yeah. Aye. Uh, sorry. I'm sitting here saying aye, and you're not hearing me. <laughs> sorry. The way to make a little, the, you know, this little fancy thing that's there go up and down or wave your hands. Right. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Reach out and let thank Brad for doing that. Appreciate it. Susan. Yes, ma'am. I I I'm I'm asking because I'm working on town report officials. Um, I didn't hear or I missed. Um, are you doing that through April or through April of 2025? 25. Thank you. Hey, it is time for the appreciation bonuses. We have a sheet here. We all need to sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're doing everything that we have um, um, done in the in the past years. That we all sign. If somebody wants to make a motion to approve those. Second. Okay. Uh, appreciation um, bonuses as presented. Yeah, as presented. You have would chastity have that? I'll sign yep, it, it was in my email. Yeah. Right. It came in my email. I saw that. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. As an employee. <laughs> You're welcome. <clears throat> so yeah. Okay, that Do I need to sign anything, Justin? I have to. Yeah, if you stop in, there'll be a whole stack of things here that you'll get. Okay, to I have to go. I have to do errands. I'll come by tomorrow. That has enough signatures on it, anyways. Yeah, yeah that's they have to. Oh, true. Yeah. All the signed copies will be on Jim's desk. Okay. Uh, okay. How about? Um... Approving the minutes. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from. I, I read them. I'm good. The, the ones right here, uh, November 14, 2023. Second. There wasn't any question marks on them this time. No, I'm not. <laughs> he usually tries first to get answers out of me, and I go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> We just, so you give us a good clerk to just trust him that he's doing it right. Um, okay, all in favor of approval of the minutes signified by saying aye. Aye. Um, I will, ab I'll abstain. That's right. Yeah. Abstention. Uh, yeah, okay. We're approving the minutes. Okay, Sit shaking hands. He seconded him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. Oh, okay. All right. Let me see. We'll take a minute here to do um wait before we take some to do the warrants. The uh yeah, the finance memo. Yeah. I am Sounds like that in turn is really proven herself, huh? She seems like she's doing a great job. She is. Thanks for noticing, Chastity. 
you're well, well, every memo you've been like, and she's done it again. And she's doing, sounds like she's doing a great job. <laughs> yeah. Where did so you find you... her? Where is she from? She's from Texas. UVM. Oh, it's UVM. Okay. Yes. I have one for the tech center, Green Mountain Tech. Yeah. Um, tomorrow on Wednesday. Oh. And then I also have one from UVM. Oh, nice. Yeah. Hey, Jen, uh, really appreciate you taking on those two. I know it wasn't quite pre-planned, but you did jump in and take care of that. So thank you. Yeah, it's not, it's probably a little more for you because you have to kind of, you're training two different people, I guess, <laughs> technically, so. Yeah. Well, it's nice to but, get uh, the policies updated and yeah. <laughs> drafted all together, so. Yeah. Nice. Um, and I know it was last minute, so if you guys want time to look them over, um, we can you can vote on them on one of your three meetings in December if you'd like. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it probably just, I mean, look at it. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, Kim helped on a day or two with the interns too, didn't you, Kim? I was kind of like distant from that, but I think you did. We're at the very top. Yeah. Think. Oh, she nice. Was, They're helping you as well, Kim. That's great. Well, she, she helped. Or, she came in. And Jen was homesick with her kids, and Ron wasn't oh. able to. So we had some things that we were working on that she, we had her help with us. Oh, nice! And she was willing to hop right in. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's true. That's yep. cool. That's <laughs> In some of these, it probably take a little time to read. So I made the wrong one. I guess I was going to say wrong way. I mean, to me, I got through the cow one earlier when she sent it. I, yeah, that's yeah. a pretty simple one. Yeah, that was. I agree with yeah. that. One. Yeah. yeah. From the, the practice of burying animals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I shouldn't call it cow, but it definitely <laughs> screamed <laughs> cow when I was reading it. <laughs> I assume that's the one you were talking about. Yeah. I think that one. That one is pretty simple. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve that one. Okay. That's the, uh, we're going to sit it down and everybody can. Second. Yeah. Um, all in favor, say by saying aye. 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 Anybody abstaining? Okay, I thought I'd sign this with you, right? This is a policy. Um, you know that. Wait, we have the other Okay. And all of those, we just stack them right here. I'm not trying to sign anything right like that right now. Okay. Um. So, okay. How about here comes some more? It's you. Yeah. 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 Jen, did the attorney review the drone use policy? When I read in there, it said something about the town attorney suggested this. You should ask Ron that. He sent it to me. Oh, okay. Okay. Ron? <laughs> Ron? Okay, yes. Um, I'm trying to look at... You're talking about the drone policy? What do you... Yeah. Yeah. Well done. So the VLCT renewal comes up every year. And one of the questions, you know, they have, a, I don't know, 60, 70 questions about uh, liability risk assessment. One of them is drone use. And at some point, I think the town probably should have a drone policy, which would say something similar to here is the procedures to use uh, regarding town operations with drones. 
Now, some of those things, and, and this is how we're going to, I think, draft the policy, prohibit use of drones for enforcement purposes. <clears throat> In other words, we wouldn't allow Steve McDonald to use a town-owned or town-rented or town-contracted drone to access people's backyards, take measurements of buildings, those kind of things. However, we might want to use drones for environmental and stormwater and road projects where we need to have good data, where the most efficient way to get that is through drone use. And that's, I think that's the main issue that VLCT has. In other words, if you're going to use it for enforcement action, it's a different type of insurance risk than simply data collection, which satellites do to a certain degree anyway. Every day, there's satellites going over the whole world that take data that we can access. Drone use is a little bit higher level detail. And we're doing it now for some of the FEMA work to determine uh, areas of damage that are inaccessible or hard to get otherwise. So the recommendation is that, you know, not in the, in the near future, not a high priority, but we should consider those things because I think the public in general doesn't want drones in their backyard for no particular reason. Once the drone enters airspace, it is regulated by the uh, Federal Aviation Agency or FAA and not subject to zoning. It's controlled by federal regulation. So it's really a federal level type of use, but you are taking pic pictures of people's backyards. And that's, I think that the town should be sensitive to that and have a policy that deals with that. Either you're gonna prohibit use in general, or you're gonna allow it in specific cases. So for another day, but just think about think about that in in terms of what the select board would do, and may, and if your concerns are purely financial, you know, can the site assessment be done more efficiently to lower taxes? Then that's probably yes. If it's protect private property rights, you know, from the town engaging with those even though satellites can produce pretty high resolution imagery anytime, uh, that, that, that's probably more of a discussion, I think, uh, if you're, if you're going to prohibit it. I think there's some beneficial use to drones uh, that we should discuss. We don't currently use a drone right now, though, right? We don't own a drone. We do use drones and the state of Vermont used drones for the July flood. Yeah. Uh, and those are very special, specific use type events where we want to capture as much information as possible, either through grants or for you know emergency planning purposes. I'm talking about the two different choices, either a, a, a across the board prohibition of drone use for any municipal service or need, and the other category, which is, here's the list of things that the select board approves the use of drones. And that that's what I want to explore a little more with you um, from a policy perspective. Um. We're agreeing to hold off on that one. We're going to push that yeah. one to later. Yeah, we that one out. But does does that? Let's see. Who who who, if anyone, has control over private people flying drones? The FAA is it. Once That's you it. once you hit, yeah. Yeah, once you have a license to operate a drone and once you say that you've complied with the licensing requirements, which are, you know, not 
not terrible. I've looked at them. They're not, it's not terribly hard to get licensed. Then you're operating in public airways and you can take as many pictures as you want. So the, the question is, you know, do you want to set limits on that or prohibit it totally from a town policy expense type of perspective, even though they're private drone operators in Hyde Park that take pictures of the whole town all the time? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I mean, I know people that have drones that take pictures. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, so I guess it's I really, didn't realize you needed a license. I mean, I guess it makes sense you need a license, but I guess I've never really thought about it. Until yeah, no, this no, there's some ex- like, there, no, there's some exemptions for the recreational person, you know. Oh, and oh, then, oh, okay. And, and then there's some licensing for commercial purposes and the weight of the okay. drone. You know, there's there's certain different levels, but from yeah. a town pers- from a town perspective, um, the LCT town attorney, you know, uh, you know, everybody sort of recommends that at least you should have the discussion. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll put that. That's raises some interesting questions. <laughs> okay, but but we're okay with cows, and we got. Uh, Let's see the one that Jen wanted everybody to sign that if it was approved. Yeah. So Jen, with the, the option to the 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 investment of five hundred thousand with what with what Ron was talking about right. with the transferring of money from ARPA to will that affect anything? It won't affect anything, correct? Um, I'm not sure I was on for the entire call, but I think you guys are talking about appropriating the ARPA money by December 31st, 2024 and spending it by. Well, the VLC, they're, they're saying to, they're suggesting to obligate the money sooner than that. And Ron sent us email tonight and they're talking about. Yes. Yeah. If you don't have contracts signed by December 31st, 2024, then we'll have to, um, we'll have to give back the ARPA money. What, what Unless it's one? obligated with contracts. And this is a, something even new, I think. Ron, maybe you should share it with her just so she's up to date with it. But <clears throat> the, the VLCT is suggesting appropriating the money by March 31st, 2024. They highlight it. Don't wait. Obligate all your ARPA funds by March 31st, 2024. Yeah. Well, I think I, the answer to your question, Matt, is it won't affect Jen's investments investments because it's not being spent it's still town it's still in town control okay <laughs> so you know whether it's in one ac- account or in the general fund won't affect the in- investment plan i just don't want to make a motion then it be and then we're talking about this email that came tonight and then jen has to poorly go through another saying hey please no oh it would only matter if you decide to spend the money tomorrow <laughs> okay <laughs> Well, I'll make a motion to follow Jen's uh, suggestion of option two with the M&T Bank for uh, interest rates. We talked. She talked about them going down. To the option two that she's got outlined in this memo: yeah. the five hundred thousand for six months at the interest rate of five point three six. I'll second it. Okay. Any more questions about it? Anything else we need to know, Jen? Jen, continuously. Thank you. Yeah. Him help this time. She reached out and got some interest rates. So, you're welcome. <laughs> I'll I'll the thing if I would say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Um, chastity. No, I said aye. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Got it. Hey. Accept the launch yet? No, I'm open. No, or I didn't get the November 14th motion either. For warrants, I don't know if you made one, but I didn't catch it or see it. What was it for? Nice meeting, yeah. Oh, I'm no, sure we did, yeah. That's what you're saying. Don't just do it, ditto whoever does it this time, right? 
<laughs> I'll make the motion to approve the warrant. Okay. All members in your Bible saying aye. Okay. Anybody opposed? What? Anybody abstaining? Okay. I'm going to abstain just because I didn't have any time to look at them. Okay. But I can look at them and sign them tomorrow if I need to. You can do that. Okay. Okay. Right. And um, Ron, Brent had a question for you. He said, did I hear correctly the fire department pays for water used in fire suppression? Fires. What's that? Um, Bryn Sheets asked if the fire department pay fire department pays for water used in fire suppression. He spelled it S U P P R E as a silent. Yeah. So, um, new concept here. So with water service, there is probably more than a dozen ways to charge for water service across the country. The town of Hyde Park pays their village water bill with almost no usage, but a base charge that's on that new formula that the village trustees adopted. And what they basically did was say, what customer base does every client in their customer list serve? And they said, well, since the county serves the whole county and the school district serves the north side of the county, uh, and the fire department serves all of Hyde Park, or, you know, and part of Eden on mutual aid, that they those three should pay a higher cost and they call them industrial or global customers, which isn't the same as a homeowner. The homeowner pays by their, a lot of times by their gallons, how many gallons they use. That's where the meter comes in. But the assessment of the base charge, which is a fixed charge, which typically is your capital charge and your capital replenishment reserve amount is where the, biggest cost came so even if the fire district didn't use any money they're still going to pay twenty thousand dollars a year in water bills what brent is talking about is sort of the, a hybrid of that where there's a certain amount of base charge the user charge and then the service charge type thing where they are providing a service to the whole community and they have a, another charge that they want to pay so in our case and I, and I don't know if this directly answers Brent's question, but the concern that the fire department has is that historically users have paid on usage. Even North Hyde Park Fire District up there pays $30, $35 a month or something for all the water use without meters. The village has transitioned to meters and they adopted the base charge, which is your capital cost and a user charge, which is usually based on operation and maintenance cost per gallon. The fire district has additional cost. So the fire department in the town of Hyde Park has a special need. They need water to fill their trucks. Do they pay an additional charge for that service that gets charged to the whole service area? Um, Richmond, it was by 15 years ago, the fire department was looking for additional revenue. And they said, well, you know, of course we serve the whole town. So why doesn't the water system provide us water and we'll pay for that. And they ended up with a budgeted item within the town budget of a certain dollar amount to help the fire department pay the water system for their fire usage of water because they serve the whole town. So it wasn't just a meter type thing. It was this, almost like a surcharge. And I don't know if that surcharge concept is what Brent's talking about, but um, he can he can 
chime in. Right now, that is not what we're talking about. We're only talking about a base charge, which is the $20,000 plus or minus, and a metered charge, which is super low uh, per thousand gallons typically. And that's where the fire department in the past only paid a very small fee. And now we have to pay, I'm, I'm talking about under, probably under $2,000 a year that went to $20,000 a year. And that's, that's, that's where we got pushback from the fire department to challenge or question this whole new system about whether in fact the fire department should be put in that same high base charge classification as the county and the school district. Um, and that's why Ryan was talking about going off, uh, you know, going off the system basically and get to drilling a private well uh, to, to lower that cost, even though it's a $15,000 initial cost for the well, the operational costs for the well are almost zero. Um, and I, and I, and I think that, but it basically could save twenty thousand dollars a year out of the high out of the fire budget. So I don't know if Brent has a follow up question to that. May, maybe he can send that in the chat or or open his audio. Hero, Hero he understands now. Yeah, he's perfect. No, he finally meet him. He has an extensive background in public works, so water issues. He will marvel at the system that we have. <laughs> <laughs> Put it mildly. Um, okay. And uh, we've got, so we've got, oh, where's the, uh, Ron, the uh, VLRT public meeting, December 12th. Yes. Yeah, so, so this is an interesting project. And I, and I don't know, you know it happened pretty quickly. Uh, in the sense that I think it's in the same category as the ARPA money, where the state of Vermont has some additional funding to spend, and they know that there's needs along the LVRT. So they awarded the town a $30,400 grant to do a scoping project to deal with the route, uh, depot street crossing and try to come up with different uh, parking and design alternatives at the trailhead on at 75 Depot Street Extension. Mid course, right after they awarded that grant, and or sorry, just before they awarded that grant, they said, hey, wait a minute, we've got a better idea. Let's accelerate this project and make it a design construction and give you, you know, $500,000 to make improvements to the project. So the town said, sure, we'll, We'll accelerate the project. Uh, we'll match the 20% from the sidewalk, Hyde Park Sidewalk Reserve Fund, and engage VHV, which is a consulting firm from Burlington, and who I had also worked on the rail trail, uh, original upgrades. So they are actively working now to redesign the trailhead parking lot to make improvements at the Depot Street Trail Crossing, which is a class two main highway. Um, and part of that process is a public input phase, which kicks off on the 12th of December. So Justin has a poster. We've been trying to get the word out, Front Porch Forum. And that's the time for people to provide VHB, the consultant with their ideas, concerns, suggestions, uh, Things like water access, parking, toilets, uh, informational signs, safety notices for the crossing on Depot Street, uh, sidewalk access, which is limited right now, uh, those kind of things. So they can incorporate all those concerns into a final design. Typically, this does take a break where you have a scoping report with all these ideas fleshed out you know, 80, 80%, 50%. And then you come back with a second round for final design construction. This time the state said, let's let's skip that first part to accelerate it. Let's go to final design and construction. So this is really a, I want to call it a scoping design meeting coming up, but it's really important for everybody to participate if they have concerns for rail trail. Once the design is done, 
the project will move quickly into construction. And that might mean new sidewalks, new crossing, warning signs on the depot street, better parking, a pavilion, parking spaces, you know, more of a regional full-blown state resource. And that's where they're headed, but they want it, they're required to get public input on the 12th of December. So, so we'll, um, we've got the posters, but we'll put it out on the front porch forum, put it out on the town website. Um, I don't know, I don't know much more you can do than, you know, than, than that. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it, do, do you, I mean, there is potentially a chance to, I mean, Justin could do this pretty quickly, have a, um, a, a joining neighbors notice, like mail to them, like a DRB notice or a planning commission hearing where the, at least the immediate neighbors get notice. Yeah, so go along on the town maps and see who abuts the rail trail and send notices to those people in Hyde Park. Yeah, and anybody with actual frontage, you know, like, you know, people that have frontage right on the parking lot or the Maury Road area that will be, you know, visually impacted. I I don't know if we have need to go up into the village, but maybe a couple of Mill Street properties that are on the south side of Mill Street have frontage on the parking and then a couple properties on Depot Street. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a good idea. Um, where are we going to put the posters? Do they treat the, the post office and the library? And... Yeah, here, North Hyde Park, and Vicky. I had to go to Johnson and Moore School too if you wanted. But... Yeah, thank you. Sure. Might, might as well, as you say, but the good old post office and the, and the library are good places. But lots of people go in and see it. I can send it to the guy at Valley Hall too, so he can put on their okay. page. And... Yeah, okay. And we're just obviously just spotting it an hour before the select board meeting somewhere. Okay, when you get there, you do these things and you do, you know, you do your best to let the public know and get them involved and all you can, you can only do so much. And then, you know, when two people show up, two people show up, just, there you go. Not, it's not from lack of trying, and you're right. So we've got the 5th, the 12th, and the 19th for select board meetings. So hopefully by the end of December, we'll be in we'll have budget in pretty good shape. Um, let's see. We should. That other stuff? We're going to need to go and do it. Do an executive session for some uh, personnel. Discharge authorization oh, to have you sign it. Right. Okay. Okay, Rolly, can you believe this is the mortgage discharge for Michael Bartlett? <laughs> as far as we said the last one, we're oh, finally done with this piece of property. Oh, it's been long. That's okay. He was there over the weekend. I was up through there. Or somebody's car was there. Yeah, well, maybe I don't know who bought it or getting his stuff out or whatever, but it's it's done. Lands the privilege counts. Rolly, yeah. it's Kim Moulton. I think that his boss bought the property. Um, so if you saw his car there, if you saw him there, he's probably has some sort of agreement with the new owner as to, you know, either he's living there or he's been given additional time to get out of there. And I mean, it literally just closed, I think one day last, not Thanksgiving week, but the week before. Yeah. I was so, this weekend, but... yeah. Well, whatever. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Good to have this one finally closed. Okay. The proposed motion is to authorize Susan Bartlett to sign the Michael Bartlett mortgage note discharge following payment of the $10,000 note dated April 6, 2022, and all current and delinquent taxes and fees related to 5659 Vermont 100. So moved. 
A second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, they're silent eyes down there. <laughs> Anybody in front of you <laughs> stay? <laughs> okay. I can also confirm that when that $10,000 note was paid, the prior year delinquent taxes were paid and the current year, August and November, taxes were paid. Okay. Good deal. So we must have gotten his water situation that cleared up too, I imagine. I'm, I'm assuming they did. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Okay. We do a, uh, let's see, we got, we got two things for executive session. Shouldn't be long. Make a motion to go into executive session. Okay. And invite Justin, and we'll keep Cass on my. And Chastain. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And, and Ron, right? Is Ron staying? Oh, uh, yeah. Ron can stay. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.